It is a beautiful day here at the Jennings Wing Car Dragway, folks. Here we have our contestants enjoying the nice weather and tending to their machines. Everyone was bustling with excitement to finally witness an event unseen to the human eye. A 1970 Plymouth Superbird taking on a modern-day drag racer. As our contestants line up, we have here Bob Jennings driving the Carl Gould paint scheme in 1970s Psychedelic Superbird. She packs a 426 Hemi engine with a drag slip tires and a mean bark under the hood. Our other opponent is none other than the Little Miss lead foot herself, Melissa Wilson, bringing her Stroke 440 509 cubic inch engine dragster. You can feel the static in the air as they begin warming those tires on the asphalt. But before we start the race, a word from the big man himself, Bob Jennings. Jennings, Jennings. About a year ago, I was at the Carlisle Chrysler Nationals in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And I was walking around on one of the days looking at the cars. I noticed this huge crowd of people around somebody talking, but I didn't know what it was about. And I was vaguely listening to this per person speaking. And I thought, man, this young woman, she has a lot of poise and confidence. So I walked over. And I couldn't see her, and then she finished. She started her car up, and I thought, whoa, I want to see this car. The crowd leaves, the car shuts down, and I'm, I'm, what's left is a uh, rail dragster with a big block 500 cubic inch stroke 440 Chrysler motor and a tiny little young lady named uh, Melissa Wilson, Little Miss Leadfoot. I got talking to her, and I was so impressed with her poise and her drive she really wants to be successful, but I decided in my company, Tax Speaker, that we would be maybe her first actual paid sponsor. And don't, don't go thinking that's a ton of money. It helps her out, that's for sure, but it's not a lot. Um, now, fast forward to uh, today. And um, this last week, the Hot Rod Power Tour, the Mopar portion of that, decided to stop at our shop here in Indiana and see all the wing cars we have around. And I reached out to Melissa, little Miss Leadfoot, said, hey, Melissa, why don't you come down from New Jersey all the way down to Indiana, bring the dragster, and we'll get you some publicity as well. So she came down. And everybody loved her. She just a very, as I said, a poised yet uh, a confident, comfortable individual, and we loved having her and Dave, her mechanic, were here. Well, when everybody left, we were all just sitting around. We got to joking and talking. And we said, why don't we do a little exhibition match between two vehicles? You see, behind me is the old Carl Gould, a uh, very rarely done Superbird that actually drag raced. As you know, most of these cars were raced at NASCAR, ARCA, around the country, but three of them were known for drag racing. There was Jack Wurst's 5 and 50. There was, of course, the very famous Sox and Martin. This was the Carl Gould Hemi, sold up in upstate New York, brand new in 1970. Well, they all drag raced in those days on the NHRA circuit, and in the summer nationals, in the summer of 1970, um, Tim Richards, later of top fuel fame, drove this car to the Superstock E-Automatic Class Championship. I want to make it clear he didn't win the Summer Nationals. He did win his class, though, in this car behind me. It is a two Hemi car, and it had a Sox and Martin Hemi in it at that time. It doesn't now, although it does have a Hemi in it now, and it's a kind of a hot engine with open headers and stuff, but very old, kind of a, a replica. Now, in 1974... It got repainted the psychedelic purple that's behind me, and we've chosen to leave it alone. So it starts great, runs great, uh, sounds fantastic, not as good as a dragster. But uh, we were joking. I said, why don't we go across the street? Our office building and huge parking lot is over there, and let's light it up. So uh, I fired the, the uh, Hemi Superbird up, drove it across the street, and staged it and, and uh, lit it up a few times. Then Melissa fired up her dragster here at the shop, drove it across the street, and uh, we cleaned them both up and, and uh, cleaned the tires off. It was a very, very hot day. And uh, then we just had a little fun side by side, and I've made sure that I wanted to make sure that, you know, you guys get the sound and the, uh, the interest and the excitement, 
The results are as expected. I won't give that away. I really think you ought to watch the, the, uh, the clips, but uh, no surprises in the results. But we had a lot of fun. I love hearing the cars race. Let me give you just a touch about Melissa's car and about this one. So she's running a stroke 440, 500 and I think it was 504 cubic inches. Magnificent car. She races primarily on the East Coast up in New Jersey and New York. And our schedule is at littlemissleadfoot.com. Uh, we may have something on our Jennings wing car schedule as well uh, about her. Um, she was at the Chrysler National, or she will be at the Chrysler Nationals in July and then racing around the country. I don't really know what else to say about the dragster. I love it. I think a lot of this young woman, we're happy to be her sponsor, and we had a lot of fun. Let me tell you a little more about the one I do know something about. So bought by Carl Gould Chrysler uh, in Vestal, New York in 1970, then uh, immediately drag raced at that time they painted it or repainted it. The car is originally a B5 dark blue, blue fire blue, and it came with a white bench seat interior. Now, I've been told in talking to the prior drag racers that the bench seat worked out a little bit better weight-wise in your class, you know, the horsepower versus weight, and the bench seat worked out a little bit better. So it was a white bench seat. That's still in it. And uh, when Tim Richards campaigned it, that's what they raced with it with the Sox of Martin Emmy. Uh, they sold it, and they sold it to the Carpenet Brothers, uh, also in upstate Pennsylvania there in New York, and they raced it at York Dragway and US 30 Dragway. And I've been lucky enough to talk to one of the Carpenet Brothers about the car for quite a while. I, I learned a few of the tricks that uh, they did to make the car a little faster. I'm not going to give them away, but uh, it is kind of humorous, some of the things that were done to these cars to to get everything that they could get out of them without getting caught by the judges, all right? So you open the hood in the car, under the car, there is a Hemi, it's not the Sox and Martin, has an old cool can. You know, they ran the gas line through it and stuck ice in there to, to cool the fuel down going in. Uh, it had an old line lock, which was, um, I gathered they don't use that today in bracket racing, they use the, the transmission lock, but um, old line lock for the brakes, and uh, just a whole bunch of other neat features. I've tried to leave everything alone, but let's fast forward a few years. So the Carpenet brothers raced it for a couple of years. And when I first talked to Al Carpenet, he even laughed. He said, you still got that Emmy in it? And I said, well, it's got an Emmy in it. Why? And he says, I hated that car. And I laughed. I knew exactly why. Maybe you don't know, but the Hemi's, the valve cover on the driver's side, slides underneath the... Um, master brake booster and the master brake cylinder and every time they wanted to pull a valve cover to adjust the valves they had to pull the stinking brake master cylinder and power booster uh, and we found that because when I went through the brakes I found that it wasn't even the old Emmy booster I had it but um, they they hated that because of that he said the car was great ran fast um, they sold it and then uh, the next guy um uh, painted it again. I think it was painted white there at one time. And then finally was sold to the last person whose name escapes me right now. And in 1974, Hank Z out of uh, Pennsylvania painted the car the psychedelic purple. Um, he owned it for several years and then he sold it to Cy Barons where it sat in. Cy Barons um, from, I think Cy is from Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. Could be wrong on that. It sat in his basement for years and years and years until um, Mike Hill found it. And Mike found it, I'm going to say about 10 years ago. Mike did a trade with Cy, got the car, uh, got it running, and then I bought it from him. I think Mike owned it maybe two or three years, maybe four. And I bought it from him uh, six or seven years ago. We proceeded. I didn't have to change anything, but I rebuilt the carburetor, gave it a major tune-up, adjusted valves and so on. And we pretty much left it alone, fixed all the electrical issues, a lot of braking, a lot of electrical issues. We fixed all of those. And here's where we are today. The paint is 50 years old. I don't take it out in the sunlight very often. Why? It's showing its age. You know, I don't want to paint it. I think it's a cool museum or history relic. And I don't want to paint it because it, it's 50 years old. But the, the ultraviolet rays are really starting to eat it up. The last... Big car show I took it to outside was in 
Edmonton, Alberta in summer of 22. And I really haven't taken it out much since then, except a little fun right around here. Uh, we did, my wife and I did take it last Saturday night. For the first time this year, we took it to a nighttime car show way down in Evansville, Indiana, about 100 miles away on the back of the ramp truck. And uh, people love the old car, and they really love it when I fire it up and pull it up here on the trailer and so on. And you can see that in other videos. So there's where the car is today. Yes, it was an original Hemi. Yes, it's got a race Hemi in it. No, it's not a Sox and Mark race Hemi, but it is a Hemi that I've done everything I know how to do with. We start it, we take it around, but you aren't going to see it very often unless you come here to the shop or you go to the Chrysler Nationals if we ever get asked to bring it back up there. Well, enjoy the video. Uh, we'll have a little fun. Maybe we'll do a little bit at the end, show a few other pictures and stuff, but I appreciate you guys. I hope you enjoy the video. I told Jason Fruits, our, our video director, I said, make sure you got lots of noise in there because that's as good as the racing because I love listening to those high, high revs on the Monster Engine. And until next time, for us here at Jennings Wing Cars, Jason Fruits, our specialist behind the camera, is our video specialist at our company across the street. And he does all these videos here for Jennings Wing Cars as well. And I'm Bob Jennings. I'll see you again next time. Thanks, everybody. See ya.